The table itself is represents two kilometers by 1.2 kilometers. It's actually based on an original American map survey of the Bocage in high scale and high definition made in July 1944. So every single hedge is actually as it was in 1944. The buildings are as close as we can get to the state of the buildings where they were in 1944 because we have access to various US photos post to this action. As you can see here, we have, uh, just to show how anal we are, um, the telegraph poles are 1930s, 1940s concrete telegraph poles that you oh, only right. get in France. Oh, God. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nothing less, I would be But expecting. we have had to include an anachronism, yes, a deliberate right. anachronism. Right. And a deliberate anachronism is here, right. which is a satellite dish. Oh, right, yeah. <laughs> well, yes, well done. Well, okay. I thought it was yeah. a pigeon from this distance. No, 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 no. It's a satellite dish. <laughs> so we thought, we, 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 we intend in all our games yeah. that we put on for the public to make sure that there is at least one anachronism for people to try and find oh, yeah. during the day. Uh, anyway. So, um, so t tell me a bit about the rules. So your, your rules. Are, are the they? rules are produced by Anschluss Publishing. They're the war on the ground. They're one-to-one -one scale rules. The ground scale is one centimetre equals 10 metres, hence the two kilometres by 1.2, or two metres by 1.2 metres. It's designed to play um, over an evening. A larger game obviously would take you a day. Much research has taken place by people who actually have been in combat, uh, who actually know what they're doing. Um, lots of research and basically what we have here is the closest we can get to reality in a playable form yeah. now and that's the important thing yeah. it has to be playable uh, and what about the um, what about the oh the periscopes over there yeah well the periscopes one of them is actually from a well they're both from Sherman's Sherman tanks one of them the one that has no damage to it uh, is from a Sherman that was never in direct action. The other one, which looks as though it's seen a bit of action, has seen a bit of action because it's from a Sherman which was knocked out in Operation Cobra in July in Normandy uh, in 1944 wow. and is still functional today. Don't ask me how I got that. It's a long, complicated story. <laughs> but it's very interesting when you get a chance to have a look through the periscope yeah. to see how little you can actually see when you're in a tank. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm here with Mike from Twilight and we're going to get you to tell us a bit about your range and what you've got going on today. Uh, you've got quite an impressive board here, you've been doing demos all day, how's it going? It's going well, it's quite, it's quite fun, we've been doing this for far too many years now so it's, yeah. quite, it's quite fun to come back and we always come back with slightly more and this yeah. year Martin's brought along an amazing board. It's very he's impressive. Made of, yeah, I drew a picture of a little city um, and he said I'm going to build that and um, Apparently he managed it very, very well. It seems like he's done a good representation it's of what you're after. Yeah, it's lovely. It's just that kind of slightly chaotic, small, bustling city with lots of um, all the civilians. I, I take every opportunity to sculpt civilians because they're just fun to do. Sure. Um, they're not 
I, t I make excuses to bring them into the game, but mainly it's just because they're fun to do. Um, and he's just taken that to town and just made lots of little vignettes and told lots of stories. And that's pretty much what I, why I do Twilight, is to make these little stories. Yeah, I mean, how long has it been going now? I've been, I've been asked that a couple of times today, and I say about 20 years, and then realise I've been saying that for at least two or three years. So, <laughs> yeah, I think it was 1998 I started the process. Right. So, um, yeah, I taught myself to sculpt in the process so that I could bring them to life. So the first few models were sculpted in my parents' house, um, cast on the hob. And then since then, it's gone a little bit more sophisticated. Cast on the hob is great. I like that. Yeah, you should go back to that. <laughs> I've still got some of those models, but um, no. Uh... I mean, you've gone back to the kind of kitchen thing, because I hear some of these are made with cake blanks, right? So oh, all the buildings, right? Oh, uh, Martin's just the, the magic work in this sort of thing. Yeah. So this is just the city. He's also built a tower over there that even makes this look, le yeah, which is even more impressive than this. But yes, it's, I've been building these out of Pringles tubes forever. Um, but yeah, it's taken it to town. And you've got, you said about the civilians, you've got a lot of a really esoteric mix of people going around this yeah, village. So Are there any new ones down here in particular? Last, there's quite a few. We did a, we did a Kickstarter for the civilians of Lanakar, which was things like there's a little, um, little guy over there with a bunch of what look like otters, so like a Laura handler. Oh, nice, um, yeah. We did, slightly longer ago, we did Jontaine's Juice Bar, which is the funny creature, big turtly creature, um, which called a Voral, which has a lot of um, drinks, drinks barrels and stuff on his back, so it's just... Jean is the slightly overweight guy over there who, um, yeah, just sell, he's got a little franchise of juice bars that he takes through the city. And I mean, this is all, is this essentially just the diorama part of it and then the game happens on the other yeah. side? You can do nice ones where you've got scenarios where things are being attacked or um, some kids are trying to steal drinks from the juice bar. Um, <laughs> but you can have also the more traditional fighty type scenarios. So the one we've got over there is um, a set of boats that are trying to get to the city and are being attacked by some Deldon who are the general aggressors in the game so um, that's going to be released eventually but it's Martin had fun, had fun building the river it fits so nicely in with the city so we uh, yeah it's a perfect opportunity to try it out and for those who aren't familiar with the game and the workings of it can you kind of give us a very quick overview of what it is so, and what it's about yeah. so it's it's a small-scale skirmish game um, so it's kind of like you might have 10 15 models aside normally um, it will scale up but it's there's not too much range in it it's quite a lot of um, small scale skirmishes but I've always tried to have very different forces so it's got a certain degree of we draw stone draw initiative counters to see who moves when um, so there's a certain degree of judgment and risk um, trying to work out how much risk you want to take how long you when you want to activate your models um, so it kind of works and it's quite nice and lightweight yeah uh, but there is strategic depth it's, it's got strategic you depth it. you can choose what how you fight in combats so it's more it was never wanted to be just roll a bucket load of dice it's more no. you choose how you play yeah, and games are pretty quick, so that's quite a lot of fun as well. You've been yeah. doing tons of demos. You can do lots there, of demos, so. you can do small games, you can do nice big multiplayer games, which is kind of everybody playing themselves, and it lends itself surprisingly well to that. It's yeah. kind of one of the quirks of the design. And I mean, yeah. so this is your world. You've made yeah. it, you've built it's it. A, if yeah. you could be anyone in this world. Oh, God. I'd probably end up being one of the little Fubani engineers, quite happily pottering away, building crazy stuff. So you basically want to translate your day job into a fantasy realm and keep doing your day you job. Think yes. Yes, it's fun because it's, yeah, I basically, when I started, I wanted to, I kind of gave myself a few difficult rules. I said, no humans, it's not going to be Tolkien based because whilst I love Tolkien stuff, it's kind of going so much of the miniatures we play with around are yeah. derived from the same thing. And it's going to try and be, try and not really have magic. It's kind of go. It's going to be. It's going to follow its own set of rules, however sure. that works. So it's kind of, and I think I've created that. It's probably got more hints of things like Dark Crystal than I originally yeah, intended. Yeah, it is. It's more it's, like if Jim Henson wrote Lord yeah. of the Rings, it's isn't got, it? Really, it feels yeah. a bit like that. And it's what's come out of my subconscious from the things I've loved. And it's just I'm a bit of a, um, yeah, magpie for just pulling in the cool things, and they sort of appear in the designs, so yeah. dinosaurs and creatures, and just. Being able to make fun stuff and whatever, it's basically a big sandpit. Yeah. It looks really good, too. Thank you. So, yeah, I mean, is there anything else I've not asked you about that you really like? You've got to know about this. Um, we've had new ranges, but it just keeps on growing. So there's lots of different cultures and different um, flavors. So, yeah, it's like we did a Kadeshi Kickstarter recently, which adds a bunch of much more wild creatures into it, large beasts. But, um, yeah, I think that's kind of a good essence of it. Cool. Thank well, you. Well, thanks for chatting. My pleasure.
So I'm here with Martin from Lounge and Strike Force. We're just going to have a look at this marvellous World War II table that really catches the attention because it's got some height, which is always nice, isn't it? Nice to see a bit of height at some of Yeah, the, the whole idea was that uh, people coming up to the table were almost at eye level because we found the tables absolutely been so low, you didn't get that kind of visual effect and you could actually kind of see across some of the boards. So it was really designed for salute. Yeah, so what's the game being played? Uh, it's basically a, a mixture of two different games. Uh, we have on one end of the board the Volga and the banks of the Volga, and uh, we've basically used Pavlov's House board game as uh, the background for actually kind of getting in the support like the artillery uh, the AA units okay and the, the command and signal structure and the upper board uh, is with the mill Pavlov's house uh, and the German front line where the milk house actually is and that's being played with uh, Dave Brown's O group rules so it's a mixture of two different kind of game sets and the, um, I mean, the, the buildings are fantastic. Yeah. It's absolutely fantastic. All the models on the table are really good. A lot of them scratch built, aren't they? Uh, yeah, I'm, luckily enough, uh, I'm a teacher, so I have access to a laser cutter at school. So uh, all the buildings which are specific to the scenario are all scratch built. Uh, I've used odd small buildings from various manufacturers and train models uh, just to actually kind of fill out the smaller uh, non-specific buildings. Yeah, it's, it's almost like dioramas if you look at different areas like what's going on down in the harbour with the explosions and the jeeps falling off the trucks falling off the um, jetty and then further up the, we've got the, like the buildings that you can see inside of which is quite unique as well. Yeah, I, it harks back to my childhood, kind of going around museums and seeing dioramas in museums and actually just staring at them and picking out the small details. So that was very much the way I design and kind of build things. I like that kind of storytelling within kind of small dioramas. Yeah, which is, so which is your favourite diorama, if you respect um, What shouldn't be missed? I really like uh, the large ship, <laughs> uh, just about to plough into the riverbank, and I also like the explosion uh, with the lorry just uh, coming off the uh, landing stage. This video has been brought to you by WI Prime, Wargames Illustrated Magazine's online members club. View more videos or find out more about WI Prime by following these links.